Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to 1905 tournament in Barmen in Germany. Uh, and uh, that tournament was organized as a part of Haupt Turnier. And if you want to know what's Haupt Turnier, this is the system. Uh, but let me introduce you by the quotation from the Chess Panorama magazine. And they say about the Haupt Turnier system as follow. The elaborate German chess organization was a casualty of the First World War and there existed nothing comparable until the Russians began to organize their own chess players on a grand scale in the 1920s. An important difference between these two systems, however, was that the German one was European in scope. Foreigners could and often did compete successfully in Haupt Turniers, while the Russian was intended exclusively for home use. So uh, Akiba Rubinstein came to Germany to play and get the master title and he was uh, first in this tournament, Haupt Turnier, and uh, also exec for with Olzich Duras. And um, the Haupt Turnier was played at the rate of one game in August 1905 and the time control two hours for the first 30 moves and one hour for uh, every another 15 moves. Okay, so I didn't show first game of Akiba Rubinstein and uh, I think the second as well. They were easy and Rubinstein won easily, but this game is played against Leopold Löwe, uh, Austrian uh, master, and he was third in this tournament, so quite strong opponent. And uh, this game, uh, Leopold Löwe play as black. And by chess metrics, his ranking is about 2452. And uh, Akiba Rubinstein uh, ranking at this moment is 2531. And he, of course, he plays as white. So let's see what happened on the board. We have d4, d5 knight f3 and c5 early attack on the on the center and now we have c3 so um this is actually slav defense but with the extra tempo for white so um pretty smart by akiba rubinstein and now we have e6 bishop f4 so london system in 1905 that was not usual at the time but let's see how this uh, you know vintage london system was played in barman knight c6 by Löwe, and we have e3 by rubinstein and here we have queen b6 uh, not the most popular move uh, but it's uh, quite okay rubinstein answer by the most obvious answer in this case queen on b6 and here if Löwe play like knight f6 and we would have knight on b on d2, bishop e7, h3, bishop d7, uh, bishop e2, and then the position would be equal and it's still playable in 21st century. However, c4 was played, so grabbing the space on the queen side, and uh, what to do now? So the idea is, of course, a force white to um, exchange the queens. The problem is that uh, black would have quite easy play on the um, open uh, A file. So that's not the option. Queen on C2 by Rubinstein. And here we have knight F6 and H3. H3 is quite important move uh, if white don't want to lose this bishop because uh, that's the threat go to h5 and attack these two squares so white would have to um, exchange their beloved bishop london system bishop that's why h3 is usually played and we have bishop on d7 knight b on d2 and we have rook on c8 bishop e2 preparing to castle and here we have queen on a5 Queen on a5, so um, obviously now black want to play against this uh, uh, pawn uh, chain, so um, b5 and b4 is coming. 
uh, we have uh, castle by Rubinstein and b5 as planned a3 so um, defending the uh, b4 so for now uh, pushing the pawn is impossible as the rooks are connected and here we have bishop on e7 so also preparing for castle uh, but Rubinstein told okay are you sure you want to castle e4 that's the that's my move uh, so white actually uh, finished development and now they want to break through in the center and Leopold Löwe play queen on a4 so he want to exchange the queens but this queen is placed in the really nice diagonal so uh, Rubinstein said not an option and also queen on a4 would be in very uncomfortable position there is nothing uh, this queen can do and if Rubinstein exchanged the queen yes black would have the double pawns on a4 but this pawn on b2 would never go forward because um, this would be controlled this b3 square would be controlled so that would be not possible so queen b1 staying on this diagonal and now probably what black should do is d takes on e4 and after knight takes on e4 just castle that would be pretty awesome because this pawn uh, always could go and make uh, black gameplay very very difficult so that was important if black castle right now then e5 would come and after moving the knight uh, white would have very powerful attack on the knight especially this um, this pawn on e5 would uh, it, it's always uh, very difficult for for playing against uh, king f8 was played instead uh, king f8 is a looks like quite strange moves it makes some sense it gives some space for the um, for the for the minor pieces um, but also trap this rook so this rook can't enter the game uh, easily uh, and here Rubinstein could probably go still follow with e5 uh, but he didn't play that he played knight on e5 uh, and here this is another chance knight e5 would be probably the best by black and after d takes on e uh, sorry e takes on e5 knight takes on e4 and after exchanging the stuff on e4 we would have that situation where both sides has a um, pair of bishops and uh, and material is equal it's quite symmetrical position however uh, white are more active so probably a better position for white but black would just bring the the queen back or maybe even try to play uh, and make some cause some troubles in the in the third and second rank of white uh, so that was the uh, the idea probably but bishop e8 was played and actually black uh, set up the position to the completely defense stance so of course it's not easy to attack the uh, fortress like this uh, but definitely is possible with a lot of pieces on the board uh, we have bishop on f3 by Rubinstein so attacking putting more pressure on d5 and now we have h6 h6 um, not sure what's the idea here uh, because black probably should play instead queen a6 or queen a5 and bring the queen uh, to the game somehow uh, it's very important on this stage uh, e takes on d5 uh, and again uh, that was last chance of black to play knight on e5 and after bishop on e5 knight d5 uh, for example bishop d5 e d5 rook e1 uh, f6 and position of black yes it's it's not really great queen e5 maybe queen uh, queen a6 so bring this queen back uh, but but not really not really great position for black but still that was the last chance to play um to play something which would you know get out of this tension in the center uh, but instead he takes on d5 so uh, leopold Löwe 
uh, decided to keep all the pieces on the board. We have rook on e1 and again queen a5, queen a6 and bring it to the defense, to bring it to the some active square. This queen is so sad on a4. Uh, but instead, Leopold Löw has the plan for the knight to uh, move it to e6. So first knight on d8 and here knight f1. So also remaneuvering the knight by Rubinstein. 9 e6 as planned and now queen on f5. So not moving the bishop uh, back, uh, rather saying, okay, your knight is... Uh, pretty well here so if you want to exchange it for my uh, bishop it's 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 okay for me uh, but interesting thing that Rubinstein missed some very nice tactic here a knight on g6 with check and double attack on the rook and the king and if this uh, knight is taken then we would have rook on e6 Queen a5, bringing the queen and queen e1. So uh, bring more attackers. Queen d8, let's say, and rook a6. That could be played now on the queen side. So if black move the queen to the more active um, spots, then uh, uh, rook a6. And after queen on d7, now queen is the in perfect place, uh, but now a4 and uh, black would probably lose the two pawns except they play something like b4 but after c takes on b4 uh, white would have attack against this one pawn um, so uh, but at least this these rooks would not be connected on the a file uh, so very strong uh, attack by rubinstein he could uh, do some decisive blow uh, and this moment but he decided to play queen on f5 we have queen on a6 so yes now uh, leopold love just brought the queen and here we have bishop on d2 bishop on d2 uh, giving the opportunity to strike on d5 but also uh, moving the bishop uh, from the range of the knight uh, and what would happen if, for example, rook b8 is played or some other slow move? Bishop could take on d5 and yes, it's, uh, it's actually protected. But now we would have knight on g6 like before. Um, and after king on g8, now we would have queen on d5. And, uh, and yeah, f takes on g6. Rook takes on e6 and uh, white has a pretty nice um, gameplay here. Uh, if Even if the, the bishop plays here, just exchange the queens and uh, really rook a7 and white has uh, actually three extra pawns in this position. So totally uh, winning. So not an option. Uh, for playing anything slow rook d8 was played so defending this d5 pawn very important stuff rook e2 and we have rook d6 so bringing some um, defenders to the e6 uh, square and rook a to e1 and here we have g6 uh, so kicking the the queen now this doesn't work actually now it looks like it could work but actually now it doesn't um, after exchanging all the stuff here, we would have queen on b7. Uh, and after rook on e7, exchanging more. Uh, king e7, that's actually... Um, yes, white has extra pawn, uh, but black has um, exchange extra. So um, it's the rook for the minor piece. So black would probably stand uh, better and maybe could try even to get a win. So queen on c2 was played and king g7. Now bringing extra defender for this vul vulnerable g6 pawn. And here we have g3. So Rubinstein tried to find the plan uh, for this. He found g3 and f4 uh, next. So bishop on d8, uh, making a space for, for the open file and also controlling this this open file uh, and here we have bishop on g2 
knight g8 now because white want to play f4 and f5 and uh, attack the knight and also the pawn on g6 would, would be very dangerous so knight g8 first f4 and now black could play f5 straight away but first they want to kick this knight so knight f3 and only now f5 uh, and here we have knight e3 by rubinstein very nice move and uh, watch what's gonna happen now this knight keep an eye on d5 pawn and this pawn is um, defended only once and also this bishop gonna attack after the knight moves so for example if knight moves here then we would have also double attack on f5 so um and 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 of course uh fork here so that would be pretty interesting uh idea here so knight f6 was played first knight h4 and now this is the threat so king h7 was played by um leopold Löwe. Um, but engine here recommends for example uh bishop on f7 so bringing more defenders to uh, e6 or even move this knight to c7 and bring the de extra defender to e8 uh, with the plan later to to go to the f7 so that would make some sense king h7 was played however and here we have knight e takes on f5 um, so white just won the pawn and of course this pawn can't be taken because uh, after queen on f5 all the position is just gone for example rook on e6 bishop of f7 and now don't take don't exchange more pieces bishop on d5 and here whatever black play for example rook takes on the uh, d5 attacking the queen then we would have rook on a5 then we would have rook on a6 rook on f5 knight f5 check king g6 and uh, white stand just better three extra pawns what can be better than three extra pawns and uh, exchange of course uh, so not an option this this way so uh, bishop could take also on e6 but then we would have queen on g6 and this bishop was very important here because it, guard, it guarded the g6 so uh, king f8 but now f5 and that start to get um, very difficult bishop d5 then we have bishop on h6 we check the only move preventing is uh, rook h6 queen h6 and after queen f7 we would have knight g6 and now we have another threat checkmate so knight d7 preventing but now knight h8 king g8 now rook e8 with check knight f8 checkmate so not an option here maybe then rook takes on d5 maybe that would work still not rook on e6 attacking the queen and now queen can go on b7 rook f6 so exchanging all the pieces uh, king g8 knight g6 and after queen g7 let's say uh, queen e6 check uh, attacking the rook so uh, queen goes on f7 uh, but queen c8 and black has nothing to do of course queen if queen moves then uh, the queen is lost uh, but after king on g7 we would have checkmate as well so definitely not an option at all to take this knight so pretty nice white are up the pawn now uh, and we have rook on b6 so getting out of the harm way and also um, still protecting the uh, e6 knight uh, king h2 by rubinstein so more that waiting move um, but also uh, bringing the king more to safety and also protecting the, this g3 which could be maybe in the future somehow attacked bishop f7 by black uh, bringing extra defenders to e6 uh, square 
and here we have knight on e3 knight on d3 with plan of pushing f uh, pawn uh, however in this position actually white could win another pawn so that would be two pawns up um, this way so takes on h6 and after king takes on h h6 f5 discover um, discover check and attack on the knight uh, king g7 f takes on e6 and now this bishop can't actually take uh, on e6 because of this attack on g6 so that would be game over uh, so bishop on e8 and white has um, pass pawn and uh, two pawns extra is enough to have very comfortable game uh, however knight on e3 was played with the plan of f5 so uh, knight on g7 by Leuve. Uh, so protecting this f5 square we have knight on f3 with idea to moving to the e5 uh, so knight d7 was played and after knight on e5 just exchange so giving the white uh, the pass pawn protected pass pawn so um, now very comfortable play for white but still have to uh, still have to play Queen on b7 was played and now rook on f2. So remaneuvering the rooks on the open file. Now f file gonna be uh, the file which gonna be played on. And bishop on e6. Important move. Um, protecting the uh, f7 uh, square. So now the square is uh, protected. Uh, but also blocking the passed pawn so white can't push the passed pawn and here we have rook uh, to f1 uh, and now i think this is the critical moment queen d7 should be played but it wasn't played by love and here is interesting situation white stands much better but the plans showed by the stockfish now it's something like uh you know bishop h1 rook f3 uh and and g4 and g4 of, co of course block um any block the square for the for the knight so this knight would have uh, nowhere to go so probably uh, that would be some option but nothing really clear however knight f5 was played and it looks like pretty solid move but actually it's a very losing move knight f5 was played and now bishop f5 so it looks like okay i got you now i'm attacking your queen uh, but the rubinstein just sacrificed the exchange what's obvious in this position queen f5 with check we have rook on g6 defending and here e6 so now you see that this bishop was you know keep the whole position intact and then uh once it was exchanged now the the pawn uh, can follow can go forward we have bishop on c7 trying to get some counterplay uh, and attacking uh, g3 uh, but rubinstein actually don't care and play bishop on d5 attacking the queen so we have bishop on g3 with check king h1 and now queen and now queen e7 by black and and here is the position where i would like you to uh, pause the video and try to find it's it's almost everything winning of course white has so huge advantage but find the the most straightforward way to win this game why i enjoy my cup of tea <sighs> okay you ready uh so as I said, whatever move you found is definitely winning, uh, including uh, bishop on e3, exchanging all the pieces and finding some mating ideas or bringing the the, the pawn um, to promotion square. But bishop on e4 is forcing the moves. And then rook g8 is actually the only move, logical move. And now queen f7. And that was played by Rubinstein, and that's the, the easiest way to victory, definitely. 
but interesting is if you found queen on h5 with the idea of um, taking this uh, pawn and checkmating this is the awesome uh, actually line uh, the problem is queen can go on h4 and now attacking the queen and attacking the pawn here so it looks pretty scary but still rook f7 check king h8 now bishop on g6 with the idea of checkmating in one so rook has to take on g6 and now not exchanging the queens taking the rook and now we have checkmate in one so uh, nothing can be done and yes this looks quite scary queen on h3 check king uh, g1 but look this rook actually protects f2 this is the only square where white could be checkmated so after queen h2 king f1 uh, king h1 king e2 uh, king uh, queen g2 king d1 and after uh, queen h1 king c2 there are no more checks and checkmate is coming in the next move so uh, queen h5 was the interesting move if you found it congratulations but uh, as you see it's a lot of uh, calculations so rubinstein was more pragmatic he just goes straight forward for the win queen f7 we have queen on f7 we have e takes on f7 and rook on f8 and here is another move uh very obvious of course rook on f6 and in this position leopold Löwe just resigned the game as he can do anything to you know prevent the loss of his rook so white would have uh, extra passed pawn and of course um, uh, one minor piece extra so even if king is moved to uh, h8 then the rook is lost of course for free and if g7 then even more pieces are lost yes black can pick up the the passed pawn but after losing the um the bishop there are two extra bishop and pass pawn for white of course very easy winning so in this position uh, leopold love just uh, resigned the game so congratulations to akiba rubinstein he got another points in this first international like really international tour tournament he played uh quite strong tournament uh, and this this is where he got his master title uh and yeah that's all for today uh if you like this video please press like and if you don't like this video feel free to press unlike and uh and yeah comment leave the comments i read all the comments i really enjoy them thanks for all so far and if you don't want to miss um, another parts of akiba rubinstein saga just press subscribe uh push the bell button and uh and yeah Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.